Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see that you're able to swim to church today as we gather together as God's people and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Offline or online, we welcome our, our folks who are watching on live stream and worshiping along as God's people. A few announcements and then we will continue to enter into worship. Uh, first of all, uh, for those of you who are physically present here at the church, we do have different refrigerator magnets in celebration of Mother's Day. Ladies, by the way, a happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. Uh, we have a variety of uh, refrigerator magnets at the west entrance, so please make sure you, you make use of those. Also then, our high school graduate recognition Sunday will be next Sunday. We will have a reception between services, so make sure you show up a little bit early uh, to be able to participate in that. Also, after our worship service today, a tradition we've been having for a number of years now, and that is free family photos in the gathering area. So if you would like to get a, a picture of yourself or your, your group, uh, family, please we, uh, welcome you to do so. It's always a lot of fun and very, very enjoyable. Final note, and that is we will be having our garage sale again this year, 120 some garage sale. It's always the first Thursday of August. So if you have some stuff that you want to unload, and that would be good for um, the uh, church's garage sale, just bring it into the church and uh, take it to the storage room, north storage room, which is essentially under the altar uh, in the church basement. So make sure you do so. Again, that uh, ultimately will be the uh, first Thursday in that weekend in August. Uh, this is a fundraiser for our Kids Against Hunger Rights Kids project, which I think we have been doing for about 10 years or so now. And uh, that will be uh, participating in uh, this fall. We don't exactly have a date scheduled for that yet. Uh, we're waiting to see what the, the organization says. But always a, a great, great uh, cause and experience as we put those kids together and help feed the hungry within our county, our country, and around the world. So, Sarah Kill, if you would uh, please come forward uh, for our Mother's Day litany. Sarah is going to lead us. Um, in this this morning, I invite the congregation to please stand and to look at uh, the first, your, the front page of your bulletin as we enter into worship. Mothers come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Thank you. For mothers. Everyone here is a son or a daughter. Thank you. For for those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on earth. Thank you, Lord, the mothers of the past. For every woman who is working day and night to raise her child right now. Thank you, Lord, for the mothers of today. For all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. Thank you, Lord, for the soon-to-be mothers. For the women who took in other children through adoption and foster care. Thank you, Lord, for the mothers of the hearts so big. For those women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. Thank you, Lord, for the mothers who are so strong. For all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but chose instead to be to mother everyone else. Thank you, Lord, for the mothers who are spirit and mentors. We thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We join together in singing hymn 367, verses 1 and 4. Now all the vaults of heaven resound. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promise, which exceed all we can desire through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Please join in reading responsively Psalm 98, found on page 3 of your bulletin. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God.
is to the Holy Gospel for you, God's people, as it is written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Today's reading, no greater love than this. As the Father has loved me, says Jesus, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Word of God, word of life. Please be seated. Grace be on you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we continue our pilgrimage through the Easter season up to the final weekend of May, in which is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the Christian church. But until then, we are journeying through the Easter season. A reminder to us that Easter is not just one Sunday out of the year. But the power of the resurrection, to live our lives that Jesus is not dead, but is risen. And what that means for us as his apprentices, his followers, for 365 days out of the year. And so we have our continuing theme, Empty Tomb, Abundant Life. One of the greatest expressions about resurrection faith. It's to know that God is love. And we heard in the Gospel reading that Jesus gives us these commandments that we may love one another as he has loved us. But each of us is gifted in different ways in which we can express and receive love. And so this is what we are exploring through our journey. We've already looked at uh, a few different ways of the five in which we can primarily give and receive love. For some of you, your primary way of showing love to others around you, as well as receiving love, is through words of affirmation. It's what you or others say. It's how you build people up, how you encourage them, how you fuss over them. Words speak louder than actions for you. And for others, your primary way of expressing God's love through you to other people, as well as receiving that love, is through acts of service. And so it is actions speak louder than words. It's what you do for other people. On this Mother's Day, for, for some of you, your moms are, are still with you. For others, you have to stroll down memory lane. But think about your moms and how they express their love for you. Was it words of affirmation as their primary way of doing so? Or was it acts of service, what they did for you? Last Sunday, it was on quality time. And that's where the primary way of expressing love is by what not you do for another person, but what you do with that other person. For some of you, and perhaps for your moms, it was more... Uh, physical touch as the way, primary way of expressing love. All those hugs. Today we're going to be looking at receiving gifts. The giving and receiving of gifts. For some of you, and perhaps for some of your moms, this was their primary way of expressing love. It may be what you buy for another person. It may be what you make for that other person. For some people, it's not so much the gift itself, but rather it's the thought behind it. You took the time, you know the kind of person I am, and you really know what I would appreciate with the type of gift that you got me. Either way, the giving of gifts, 
This, um, by the way, I must confess to you, this is my weakest point. When you think about the five ways of expressing and receiving love, this is the one that I pretty much flunk. I am not adept to this one well at all. When it comes to Christmas time and, and for the kids, when I would tell Crystal, it's like, well, what do we do? With well, just figure it out, honey, whatever, I'll help out and, and say Merry Christmas. I'm not a good gift giver. When it comes to her birthday, it's like, what, what do you think uh, would be a great gift for you? Well, if you, you got it figured out, just get it yourself and, hey, happy birthday. That, that's my way of doing birthday gifts. Okay, it never really goes over all that well. So, fellas, I'm just telling you right now, if you've got a special someone in your life, I am not a very good role model when it comes to this particular way of doing things. So, be that as it may, true confession. Nevertheless, for some of you, this is where you excel. This is your way of how you love to not only receive love, but also to express it. If we are to think about a word that describes God, first and foremost, I would say, hands down, from Genesis to Revelation, cover to cover would be love. In the first letter of John, a profound three-word description of God. God is love. But a close second, from cover to cover in the scriptures. If you were to look for a word that really describes this God, this God of Abraham and of Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses, this God who in the flesh came to us 2,000 years ago in the one that we call Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, the Christ, and hence we are Christians, Christians. Second word that would be descriptive of this God would be giving. One of the most well-known phrases, verses, throughout Scripture. John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world that he gave. What did God give? He gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world and you and me may be saved through him. Our God is a giving God. Love would be the primary way of describing God, but a very close second would be give. God loves to give us his gifts. First and foremost, the gift of himself through Jesus, his birth at Christmas, his three-year ministry, his death on Good Friday, his resurrection, Easter Sunday, and his ongoing gift to us through his Holy Spirit. The gift that we receive through the sacrament of holy baptism as we witnessed last Sunday with Dakota Neuheiser. So in our reading for today that uh, Monica shared with us, our first reading in the book of Acts, the second volume of the Gospel of Luke. It's the same author. Luke wrote, The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded. They were just absolutely floored, flustered, amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. Gentiles means whoever was not Jewish or not Hebrew. In other words, you and I are Gentiles because we are not Jewish. But the point here is God, who is a giving God, and one of the great expressions for giving and receiving love is the giving of gifts. God has given the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you and I, as baptized followers of Jesus, we have this gift. Now, I've got to admit that as Lutheran Christians, as Lutheran Christian followers of Jesus, when we think about the, our Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
This perhaps can be our weakest area. We do great. We back close to a thousand when it comes to our expression of love and our understanding per se about God the Father, about God the Son, Jesus. But the Holy Spirit is the one that can really judge us quite a bit in getting a grasp of just who is the Holy Spirit and what is the function of the Spirit of God. And yet this is a gift of love that God grants to his followers. The Holy Spirit, as the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament would say, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in God's presence. And as the Apostle Paul wrote to his, the church in Galatia, he said the fruit of the Spirit. We are called to bear fruit. And it's through the Holy Spirit then that we can produce the fruit of love and joy and peace <clears throat> and patience and kindness and generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, some of that fruit within us, and it is great to do a fruit inspection uh, of ourselves as time goes on. What fruit are we bearing well? What is ripening? And what is rotting needs pruned and shored up that we can produce yet again? Would you please turn with me to your hymnal, page 1162. This is right towards the back of your hymnal. We have the small catechism of Luther written almost 500 years ago. This is printed in the back of your hymnal. And on the Apostles' Creed, the third article or the third paragraph, we have what Luther wrote as a description of the Holy Spirit. That perhaps our, our comprehension, we may struggle with our understanding of the Holy Spirit, but yet is such a vital part of our faith as Lutheran followers of Jesus as disciples, apprentices of our Lord. So Luther, as we see in the Apostles' Creed, right towards the bottom where it says, third article on being made holy. In other words, the big word is sanctification. We would just say, quite simply, becoming more like Jesus each and every day. That's what it means to be holy. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And of course, Luther's all-famous question that he always likes to ask, what does this mean? Let us proclaim this together, what Luther wrote about the Holy Spirit. Together. I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith, just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. Daily in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sins, mine and those of all believers. On the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and will give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. That's why God gives you and I the gift of the Holy Spirit. For it's through Christ's Spirit that we are drawn closer to Him. It's the Spirit of our God that shines the light on Jesus, of who we know we need to focus on. It's the Holy Spirit that we cannot earn or deserve, but rather is a gift. It's the power that we are called to plug into each day. On this Mother's Day, ladies, we want to thank you for the powerful witness that you continue to give in your daily life. That you as the vehicle of God's grace and love and mercy and gift, that you express your love, God's love, through you. Through your witness, through your modeling of the faith, through your testimony, we are drawn closer to God and understand.
understanding who our Lord Jesus Christ is. And it's through you that you make a difference in Christ's creation. We're truly grateful for each and every one of you. And thanks be to God for the inexpressible gift that you have been blessed with. And your willingness then to share that gift of faith and hope and love with those who are around you. The giving and receiving of gifts may be your primary way of expressing God's love to others. Or it might be words of affirmation or acts of service. Maybe it's physical touch or spending of time. But either way, God is love and God is giving. And we are called to pass that on to others. May this coming week be a true blessing for you. That you can be a blessing to other people as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad. Turn to page 105 in the front of our hymnals, page 105, and with the whole church, let us proclaim our resurrection faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those that need it, for all of God's creation. Risen Jesus, through your life, death, and resurrection, it is through you that we know that God is love, and that we understand that God is giving. On this Mother's Day, we honor our ladies, our all women, and give thanks for their expression of faith and of hope and of love, knowing that the greatest of these is love. We pray on behalf of Pat Leland and Jeff Donor, of Jerry Pauline Bassino and Kenny Donor, of Bev Cordy and Corey Kleppel, of Linda Sink, Pauline Weldy, of Ted Adams, Jan Hoblet, Nancy Gardner, and Scott Etkin. So Lord, help us to do what you are blessing as apprentices of Jesus to bring healing to this land and throughout your creation. Lord, in your mercy, your into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please extend God's peace to those who are around you at this time. Peace, Lord.
Please be seated. It's at this time that uh, Stan Welty will be coming forward and giving us our giving talk. We have not had one of these. Uh, gosh, it's been over a year now with all things COVID and such. Uh, one more step as we get back into more familiar patterns. So Stan, in today's giving talk. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Psalm 62, verses 1 to 2. For God alone my soul waits in silence. For him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be moved. How often have we heard from Scripture the words, Wait on the Lord, or be patient in the Lord? One definition of patience is to bear provocation, annoyance, misfortune, or pain without complaint, loss of temper, irritation, or the like. The past several months, we have been striving to patiently wait for life to return to normal, be it a new normal. Now, if you're like me, during this time, impatience has had occasion to make itself known. <clears throat> if I understand, if so, understand that we are in good company. Psalm 69, verses 1 2, 3, two, three King David writes, Take me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sing in deep water, for there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters, and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with crying, my throat is harsh. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. The past few months, your patience and faithfulness as a congregation has been demonstrated through your financial gifts. For those of you whose personal finances have not been affected by the pandemic and have been able to contribute, we thank the Lord for providing, and we thank you for your generosity in sharing that provision. Anyone in our congregation who may have struggled financially because of the pandemic, we hope and pray that your financial security be restored. We would also like to encourage you to remember the ministries of the congregation as they are able to start working again. We encourage you to remember the miracles and the opportunity to serve a body. When we speak of patience and generosity, we must consider their roles in the most important area of our life, our salvation. As Paul writes in Romans chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, for he, will, for he will render to every man according to his works, to those who by their patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. Thank you, Stan. I invite you to turn to page 112 in your hymnals. We wish to follow along as we continue our service of worship with the Lord's Prayer. Please stand at this time. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed and beloved people of God and members of his forever family, God has shown you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with our God? So on this Mother's Day and for the week to come, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God. We join together in singing hymn 836. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. 
verses 1 and 2.